When I was a little girl, a wolf hunted our family farm. It wasn't content to pick off a chicken or the family dog. It wanted the whole farm. My father found work, but the wolves found him. My parents always thought they'd catch a break, but they never did. The wolves came for mom and pop stores. They came for cheap prescription medicine. They came for affordable homes. They came for college loans. Forget inflation. Wages never kept up with corporate greed. Yeah, that's the opening portion of a really powerful campaign ad that you may have seen going viral in the last few months. I think over 6 million views so far. The candidate is a woman named Katrina Christensen running for Senate in North Dakota. Now, she's a second-time candidate. She ran last cycle. She's taken on long-time entrenched politician, although he is a first-term first senator, Kevin Kramer, who's a real sycophant of Trump, uh, anti-abortion, you name all the usual suspects, for some reason just hates any kind of regulation. So, you know, you've got a really experienced candidate running, and I always love, you guys know if you follow me, you know I love second-time candidates. They've learned their lessons, they're applying those to run professional races, and Katrina is a good one. So, I was really excited. I actually talked to her earlier in her race uh, a while ago, and I've been excited to get her right here in the hot seat and talk about where is she going. I mean, this is a, a college engineering professor with two patents to her name, and she's got that hit viral ad. So I want to get in the hot seat, so we're going to do it today. Again, I am Fred Wellman, host of On Democracy with F.P. Wellman, right here on the My Touch Network. Let's talk to Katrina. All right, Katrina, man, it is so great to connect with you. Thank you for taking this time. I know we had a chance to talk. I think we talked early in your campaign, one-on-one. -on -one. I, I know your campaign. Yeah. Yeah. Man, just like the inside scoop. <laughs> it's yes. so good to have you in the hot seat. Welcome to the Minus Touch Network. You know, you're a second time candidate. You know, you've got a family. You've got a full time career, I believe, you know, Professor. Why are you running to take on really one of the most entrenched Washington creatures with, with Senator Kevin Kramer? Well, I think you said exactly why. I mean, he's entrenched. He's not connected to our communities here in North Dakota. And the yep. same problems that you know, existed in 2022 are still here. Uh, we don't have anyone representing our concerns. You know, we have somebody who's representing corporate PACs, <clears throat> special yeah. interests. So, um, you know, yes, I am all of those things, wife, mother, uh, professor, and um, it's just really important to contribute to my community by by winning this race. So thank you. Yeah. And you lit the country on fire right at. I showed a clip of it when we first opened the show. Um, I mean, it's been a, it's been wonderful to watch it go viral. I think six million views or some incredible number. Um, yeah. What, what do you think? What are you hearing feedback? What struck them? I mean, you, you go pretty hard at, at some real hard hitting issues for average Americans. Isn't that is that kind of what the resonate was resonating? You think? People connect to stories and that video yeah. does a really good job of telling my family's story of losing the farm. And here in North Dakota, we have a lot of people who have lost the farm or their family prior to them lost the farm and they, they just really connect to that. I have talked to so many people since they've started to tell my story about my upbringing. It's really hard to talk about, but my campaign team wants me to talk about it. And yeah. people will come up to me honestly and they'll say like that is the best speech i connected so well you know i grew up in a family of 12 right on a farm and you can just kind of imagine if you've lived that life then what they have right and you have that connection and so i think that ad just really connected with people and of course it goes into the wolves that have kind of decimated rural america or main street and people can connect to that. And it's, yeah. that's, I think, why it resonates so well. Well, and it's a lived life, right? I think I think too often we see elected officials that it really appears they haven't lived our lives, right? And especially the GOP, they're running these millionaires and everybody else. You know, Kevin Kramer's been in Congress or in, or in the Senate for years, the politician. You know, he's got a long history of opposing any federal regulations from the environment to, you know, the healthcare initiatives, any healthcare initiatives. Uh, he voted against the ACA. He's co he co-sponsored that terrible uh, Life and Conception Act. I mean, he's done all these things. Now, how does these how does these efforts as a senator actually help North Dakotans? Well, I, I want to say that, you know, we we know people are really frustrated by him. Um, I have a lot of independents and Republicans that I've been interacting with who are like, I never liked that guy. I yeah. never liked that guy. I can't tell you how many times I've heard that. And I think there's a lot of frustration with him having gone Washington. 
I think one of the things that's, you know, like you mentioned him voting against the ACA, he voted to repeal it every single time. He voted against the CHIP Act. And I recently was, you know, in a car accident. We had to get a new car. It took a month and a half to get the car. And then when we got it, we only had one fob. We only had one key to go with the van. And this chip shortage, right? It affects people like me living in the state of North Dakota. And he doesn't take it seriously. And that's an opportunity to reshore jobs. And he just, he fights any sort of progress that isn't partisan. And it, it, it hurts us. Yeah, I get it. You know, it was reported so, that he, he, he said, I, I think he said he, t- he texted Donald Trump to congratulate him for his nuanced view that was political. I mean, he also was one of the sponsors of the, the, the Life Conception Act, which is a national abortion fan. So it's like he wants it both ways. Now now we have places where... Yeah, it, yeah. It, you know, IVF is outlawed in Arizona uh, or, or, or in Alabama. Arizona's gone back to 1864. North Dakota, you've been abortion has been completely outlawed in North Dakota. I, I think it went to court and they lost. That it's it, doctors are confused. You know, he doesn't seem to have a problem with stripping women of their rights, does he? I mean, where does this go? Well, I I think it's really important that while we're on this campaign, we talk about the importance of having access to the healthcare that we need, um, whether that's IVF or abortion healthcare. And the the current Abortion Care Act, I think, or something like that, I can't remember what it's called, but it's the bill that restricts that in North Dakota, allows um, abortions up to six weeks for rape and incest. And it's it's absurd that they call that an exception. And, um, you know, there's a, there was a lot of confusion for a really long time about whether or not ectopic pregnancies would be treated. And it, it's, it's bananas, right? We live in a time of just insanity post Dobbs if you're a woman and you need health care. And we, yeah. we need to be talking about that during the campaign. And that, I mean, Kramer doesn't really reflect his own ideals if he's tweeting President Trump. And he was the sponsor of a national abortion ban saying, hey, thanks for helping me out this election cycle by um, taking a position that, you know, we can't trust that position, right? No. I'm sure if he was elected, there would be a ban. That's terrifying. Yeah. Terrifying. And it goes national. There won't be any more escapes. It won't be going to another state. And and I've, I've I talked to uh, Kaylee Peterson over in in, in Idaho, and and they've seen uh, just uh, the exit of doctors. Uh, OBGYN clinics closing down. Um, one of Kaylee's staffers drives four hundred miles for care. Uh, to see, for her pregnancy, uh, you know, like large Western states like yours, that's, you know, they're, they're big. People forget how big that state is, don't they? Yeah, you know, exactly. I met somebody in Minot who had told me about like, well, that's in like Northwestern North Dakota, right? Right. And that it's like five hours from Fargo ish or, you know, depending on how you drive. Um, <laughs> but their daughter, you know, had to get IVF treatment in Fargo, right? That, that's a, that's the only clinic in North Dakota. And if it's gone, then where are you going to go? Minneapolis? I mean, that's a huge drive. And so, and you're already under stress. And so we need to protect these things, this cycle, get them entrenched in the law so that, that those things are there um, and can't be overturned. It's yeah, really important and, that we do that. And that, and we need to send people to send it like you. Now, you know, North Dakota may, may not be on the radar for a lot of Americans, right? I mean, you know, obviously the, the, the punditry class ignores it. You know, we tend to write off these races. You know, I'm sure you're hearing it all. Um, they'll write them all off. Now, what makes you think otherwise this cycle? I mean, you're a second-time candidate. You did this before. So, yeah. You know, you, you, I, I've seen you say in other interviews that you you feel pretty good this cycle. Tell tell us why North Dakota matters and, and why you feel so good uh, this cycle that, that, that Kevin Kramer's in your sights. Well, every Senate vote is worth the same amount. So right. it's just as important as every other Senate seat. But the thing that most probably people don't know is that um, North Dakota used to have two Democratic senators up until 2010. And yeah. then, of course, one in 2012, all the way up until Kevin won in 2018. And so it's not that far away. We also are just a really cheap date when it comes to expanding the Senate map. <laughs> no, I, we need three and a half, seven million dollars. That's it. We don't need 70 million. I mean, we can buy all of the TV for that. There are only 786,000 people in North Dakota. You know, I like to point out that there are fewer North Dakotans than there are Republicans outnumbering Democrats in Florida. So uh, registered, I mean, Mm -hmm. but um, it's and and we've had a phenomenal fundraising since uh, from 2022. We've raised over half a million dollars, over 12,000 individual donors. Um, People are people are really supportive and. You know, at this point, I, I really feel like we can't do this. Um, 
it's just a matter of getting out in the field. I'm taking unpaid leave to get mm. into the field, campaigning, meeting everybody I can. Former Senator Dorgan, a Democrat from North Dakota uh, who voted for the ACA, said that voters have to know you, like you, and trust you to vote for you. And I don't know how many Republicans have told me that they really like Senator Dorgan. And he won every county in North Dakota um, in his last election in 2004. So we're going to get out there and uh, meet those donors and get them to trust me and, and vote for me in November. I love it. Now, you know, I, you are the official nominee, I believe, right? You just had your convention. Um, Unanimous. Oh, there you go. It's the best kind. Congratulations. Yeah. It's exciting. I mean, it's a, it's a it's a big milestone to make. And you can, now you can focus in general and take it on. Um, you've got some great momentum building. Like I said, the ad went viral. You're doing well. You know, how can an average American, I mean, the great thing with the Myers Touch Network is we're, we're across the country. We're national. How can average Americans help you? How can our viewers find you? Where should they look for you? And, and what is you looking for? Well, sharing uh, my video would be really great because I think it's a really powerful story that resonates with people. Um, they can also go to Katrina for us Senate.com and help us get to that three and a half million number. Uh, that would be fantastic. Um, of course, we're on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, all the, all the digitals um, and uh, to just grow our following and grow that, make this a really uh, the race to watch in October. So, well, I love it. Congratulations. I mean, I'm congratulating getting the nomination. I'm, it's great to know you and see your work unfolding for you. So if we can help you, let, let us know. But uh, keep up the fight. Thank you, Fred. I really appreciate it. Man, another great conversation in the hot seat. Katrina is a terrific candidate. Uh, if you could support her, go for it. North Dakota is in the fight. Uh, you keep seeing these wonderful candidates. I hope you're learning a lot about the incredible breadth of Democratic candidates running for higher office this cycle, and you can support them. We'll be presenting more of these, what we call, in the hot seat as we go forward right here as part of the hot, On Democracy a family of conversations, uh, candidates, newsmakers, you name it. I hope you'll tune in. In the meantime, catch new episodes of On Democracy's F.P. Oman, me, every Friday night, premiering at 11 p.m. Eastern, right here on the Myers Touch Network, every Friday. So make sure you catch that. Thanks for joining us. Stay in the fight.